sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Beg pardon. That's John chapter 17, verse 17. Out of the authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures. The true. The real scriptures. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Question that I was asked. And it's a question that comes up primarily by textual critics. For those of us who, who say, adhere, and believe the truth, that these King James scriptures are perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. These... King James scriptures are absolutely perfect. There's no error in them. None whatsoever. But the question comes up, was there a perfect Bible before 1611? Was there a perfect Bible? Well, to answer that, we're going to have to look into a few things. First of all, before we go any further, those of you who watch any of my videos uh, have kind of noticed that I have been um, working at removing the term Bible from my vocabulary, but referring to the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? You have probably noticed that as I have been working at removing the term Christian from my vocabulary, except when making references to those who call themselves Christians, like Catholics. Okay? The word Bible itself, as a lot of the enemies like to, to point out, to justify their own arguments, usually when it comes to defending the satanic Roman Catholic pagan trinity, they'll say, well, Bible is not in the Bible. Where did I go, genius? Yes, you're right. The word book is. Biblas. Okay? The word book is. Now, on a personal note, brethren, I'm not going to jump on anybody of the Church of the Living God who refers to the scriptures as the Bible. I'm, I'm not going to jump on you for that. Not at all. That is my own thing. Um, the word Bible is not in the Bible. But let's define the word Bible. Okay? Webster's 1828 Dictionary, okay? The word Bible, let's find the word Bible in 1828 Dictionary, okay? Hold on. Okay. Yeah, ready? Hold on, hold on. Okay. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The definition of Bible. Noun, the book. By way of eminence, the sacred volume in which are contained the revelations of God, the principles of Christian faith, and the rules of practice. It contains two parts called the Old and New Testaments. The Bible should be the standard of language as well as faith. Let's read that again. Bible, the book. By way of eminence, the sacred volume 
in which are contained the revelations of God, the principles of Christian faith, and the rules of practice. It, contain, it consists of two parts, the Old and New Testaments. The Bible should be the standard of language as well as of faith. Mm. Interesting. Let's look up now, shall we, the word book. Book. All right. Book, as defined in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Okay? Book. Noun, a general name of every literary composition which is printed, but appropriately a printed composition bound, a printed composition bound, a volume. The name is given also to any number of written sheets when bound or sewed sew together, and it is and it and to a volume of blank paper intended for any species of writings of writing as for memorandums for accounts or receipts two a particular part of a literary composition a division of a subject in the same volume such as the book of john the book of james the book of malachi yada 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 three a volume or collection of sheets in which the accounts are kept, a register of debts and credits, receipts and expenditures, etc. In books, in kind remembrance and favor, I was so much in his books that at his decease he left me his lamp, Addison. Without book, by memory, without reading, without notes, as a sermon was delivered without book. This phrase is used also in the sense of, of without authority, as a man asserts without book. Book, verb transitive, to enter, write, or register in a book. Okay? So there is both the definition of Bible and book, okay? Okay, you, you got that so far? Okay, okay. Uh, got, uh, got quite a few things here <laughs> we're gonna go through, but this question whether or not there was a perfect Bible book before the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, okay? We have to remember something, brethren, sisters, that before the completed canon of scripture, there was the Old Testament, okay? And what is the Old Testament? Go to Luke chapter... Luke chapter 24, okay? Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 on to verse 46. These are the words of Jesus Christ, our God, our Lord, our Father. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Look at verse 44. Okay? The law of Moses, the Torah, the first five books. Okay? And in the prophets, 
from Isaiah to Malachi and the Psalms, okay? The Psalms, all right? But within that, we have the books of first, uh, first through Second Kings, first through Second Samuel and Chronicles, and also, and also Ruth, Judges, Joshua, stuff like that. Okay, that is the canon of the Old Testament, along with Ecclesiastes, Esther, and stuff like that. The Jewish people, by the way, never, never considered the Apocrypha as legitimate Old Testament canon. Even Jerome and both Erasmus, okay, Erasmus was the one who put together the Textus Receptus. And brethren, Church of the Living God, here's a sore spot for you, but this is the facts. Erasmus was a Catholic. He was. He was not truly a practicing Catholic, but he was a Catholic. And he compiled the Textus Receptus, the received text, to give it on to the Pope. But the Pope rejected Erasmus' text. They instead went with Jerome's. Jerome's does not match Erasmus' text, the Latin Vulgate. Okay? You need to understand that. You can look all this up on your own time. Okay? Pope went with Jerome's Latin Vulgate, his text. Okay, you get that so far? Even Jerome himself said of the Apocrypha that the Apocrypha was not originally in there from the writings of the Jewish people. Okay, we have to understand that. We have to understand that. Now, the Word of God, the Scriptures, went through what is called a seven purification process. Turn in your authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures, the True and Real Scriptures, to Psalm 12. Okay? Psalm chapter 12. Verse 6 on the verse 7. Okay? I've covered this before. But, in light of the question I was asked, let's hit this again. Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm. There you go, Brother Alexander, here. There you go. <laughs> psalm 12, because the Psalms don't have chapters. There you go, Brother Alexander. Psalm 12, verse 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Okay? From this generation forever. Now, these seven purification process, which I have written in the back here of the scriptures, seven purification process. Now, I first heard of the seven purification process from, yes, Dr. Ruckman. However, the type of person I'm, which is the type of person, spirit, soul, and body, that I would like you to be, is when you hear something like that, uh, hey, go check it out for yourself. Check it out. Check it out as I did. And let me tell you something, when you look into the seven purification process on your own, um, it's pretty amazing. Number one, it's very time consuming and it's very tedious. But you can find for your own that these are the seven purifications that the Word of God went through to arrive at the perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures, King James scriptures, okay?
Here are the seven purification processes, okay? Here are the languages, the tongues, okay? Get a pen and paper. Write these down and on your own time, look every one of these up. I, I dare you to. I dare you to. Okay? Number one, Hebrew. The Jewish people were the custodians of the scriptures in the beginning. The Old Testament scriptures. Okay? And when you look into the prophecies of scripture, okay, you realize that there was more to come. Because it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, especially Isaiah 53 and beyond uh, from Isaiah 40 about how it will go on to us to Gentiles, which is verified in Romans chapter 11, okay, that we were grafted in to their tree to make the Jew jealous, okay, that there was more to come other than the Old Testament scriptures, okay? You get that so far? But the Hebrews were the custodians of the Old Testament scriptures. And until the printing press was invented, all these scriptures were handwritten. Copies upon copies upon copies upon copies. That's why there is no such thing as an original Isaiah, an original book of Romans, an original Torah, as written by the hand of Moses, as written by the uh, prophet Isaiah, as written by uh, King David in the Psalms, there is not an original copy out there because they were used, they wore out. They were all written by hand. And there were copies upon copies upon copies upon copies. Okay? Okay? And through that process of time, the Lord was preserving his word. Okay? He was preserving his word. Through that process, every, uh, think about it, logically, over time, there were variations within the text. Okay? Because it was all handwritten. But there were copies upon copies upon copies. But the Lord kept the text. He preserved his word. See, okay? And the Old Testament scriptures, which did not include the Apocrypha, were not the completed canon of scripture. Okay? So in that alone, in that alone, no, no, there was not a perfect Bible until 1611. But see, once the New Testament, since the books of the New Testament came about, and the Catholics like to tell you that they're the ones who uh, picked those, but no, no, remember what we read in Psalm chapter 12? Okay, let's go back there. Okay, Psalm chapter 12. Okay. Um, you think the Lord, the Lord's church is one that is based off of paganism, such as the Roman Catholic Church, which worships a false god of three persons that make one god? No. Which venerate worship Mary Semiramis give me a break okay remember Psalm 12 verses 6 and 7 the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times okay thou shalt keep them O Lord thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever the Lord preserved his word okay we have to understand that, okay? But the Jewish people, the Hebrews, were the custodians of the Old Testament. 
Then it was in Aramaic. Aramaic was one of the purification processes because part of the books of Daniel were written in Aramaic. Okay, same with Syriac. Okay? You can check this out on your own time, okay? Aramaic, okay? The third, the third, Greek, Greek. And there are those out there who will tell you that Jesus Christ, God the Father himself, read this, the Greek Septuagint, that has the Apocrypha. There is not one sh uh, shred of evidence of a B.C. before Christ Septuagint, okay? And those who are trained in Jesuit-run cemetery schools, like Dallas Theological Seminary, some will say, well, that, Brad, that's not a Jesuit school. Oh, uh, remember, the Jesuits' job was to infiltrate and to bring people back to Rome. And Satan is the ultimate textual critic. Okay? You have to remember that. Satan is the ultimate textual critic. Yea, hath God said. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? Textual criticism is just that. They criticize the text. And what texts are they criticizing? Okay? The fourth purification is Syriac, old Syriac, okay? And you can reference Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Acts chapter 11, verse 26, where they were called Christians first. Where they were called Christians first. Syriac, okay? The Church of the Living God did not call themselves Christians. The only reference that someone can make an argument out of is when Peter says, if any suffer as a Christian. That's the only argument that they, that they can come up at. But within that context, it said kind of as a bent. And people back then would say, oh, you're a Christian. That's what they called us. We did not call ourselves Christians. Peter said that as just a reference, not referring to us as Christians. Okay? Because Mormons are Christians, right? Lutherans are Christians, Methodists are Christians, Catholics are Christians, okay? Some like to say that Jehovah's Witnesses call themselves Christians. Uh, some have heard them say that uh, most of the times. Um, they will even correct you, that's happened to me. It's like, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. And, ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you really are, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. They called us that. We didn't call ourselves that. Comprende? Number five, Latin. The old Latin. What is the old Latin? Erasmus text, which the Pope did not use. They used Jerome's Latin Vulgate text, which does not match Erasmus's. Okay? Okay? Then you have... German, Luther's Bible, all right, German. Luther used the Textus Receptus, but there again, there again, was that perfect? No, no it was not. And then the final purification is English. English. And from the English line, you have several Bibles. Okay? Let me give you some examples now. Okay? Here is 
the Dewey Reams. Okay? This came out in 1610, a year before the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Okay? Is this a perfect Bible? Hmm? And I want to show you something. Now, I am kind of going off of something that another brother had brought up, but I'm going to uh, illustrate this to you, and I understand that my uh, camera here, when I do this, is not very clear, but I want to show you, okay? You see this up here? You see that? The Holy Bible in English, Dewey Reams American Edition of 1899, okay? This has the D's and D's in it and stuff like that, okay? But it says, Holy Bible in English. Hmm. Hmm. Okay? Okay. This, this is a new American standard. You see that? That's a Holy Bible. It's a holy Bible, just like the Dewey Reams. Hmm. See this? Oh, see that? It says Holy Bible. This is a Holman Christian Standard Bible, just like the Dewey Reams and the New American Standard Bible. Hmm. Here is a revised standard version, Catholic edition, Westcott and Hort. You see that? See what that says? This is a holy Bible collection of books. <clears throat> this, see that? It says holy Bible. English Standard Version. This is a Holy Bible. Hmm. You don't say. This. See that? It says Holy Bible. New Revised Standard Version. This is a Holy Bible too. See that? This is the Geneva Bible, which has notes in it from John Calvin. Yeah, John Calvin. Our American ancestors, Puritans, this was on the Mayflower. Set to say. It was a, that uh, the Geneva Bible is part of the purification process within English. Okay, English is the seventh purification, the English language. All right. Okay, you get that so far. And here, my even my Cambridge says, "Holy Bible." On it. And before the authorized version of the Scriptures, there was the. There was, um, what was his name? Tyndale, Coverdale, Matthew's Bible, the Bishop's Bible, Luther's Bible, the Geneva Bible, okay? And Luther's was in German. But as far as English, okay? Now, the Geneva Bible is based off of the Textus Receptus, all right? The Dewey Reams is not based off of the Texas Receptus. What are these based off of? I have here two Greek texts. This is the Greek text of the Texas Receptus. This, this actual edition, and there are something like 19 editions of the Greek text, and this says the Greek text underlined the English 
authorized version. And this one is, um, uh, it says here, uh, it says here within here somewhere about what edition this is, but there are 19 at least editions of the text as Receptus, the Greek. And this right here has the Textus Receptus, the Queen Greek, and the Hebrew. Okay? This one right here. This is the whole shebang. All right? And this right here is my only copy of the Nesalalan Greek text. This is the 26th edition of Nesalalan, of the Nesalalan, okay? This is up to what, 28, 29 now? 28 or 29? 18 or 19? Okay, 18 or 19? Okay? And oh, 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 got another one to show you. See this? This is the United Bible Societies, New, the Greek New Testament, fourth edition. Hmm. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> the authorized version of the scriptures is based upon this. Okay? This, the received text. This, the revised standard version which is based off of the Greek text of Westcott and Hort, is based off of this. Okay? You with me so far? This can be traced back to Alexandria, Egypt. This can be traced back to Syria, Antioch, where they were first called, where they were first called Christians, okay? And the English Bibles, Bibles that came up through the Antiochian line, such as Matthew's Bible, um, the Geneva Bible, yes, uh, Tyndale, Coverdale, okay, Bishop's Bible, I believe, as well, okay, they came up through the Antiochian line. But those that are based off of the Septuagint, and the Alexandrian Greek text, you saw them. The Dewey Reams, the NIV, okay? Jerome's Latin Vulgate, the ESV, the New Living Translation, the Holman Christian Standard, the Not King James, so on and so on and so on, okay? Yeah, get me so far? And when you compare the Geneva Bible with the authorized version of the scripture, there are major differences between them. There really are. And when you look at the fruit of the authorized version of the scriptures, some people still will read the Geneva Bible. Yes. And um, Jesuits nowadays, they will use either the revised standard ver re 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 the revised standard version, which is the Bible that's underlining their actual Bible, the Roman Catholic Catechism. They will also use the Dewey Reims or Jerome's Latin Vulgate, which all trace back to Alexandria, Egypt. Okay. Are you with me so far? This is very simple, actually. Then the Lord in England, through three places, Westminster, Oxford, and Cambridge, where they got these translators together who were brilliant men, and they went and translated the scriptures under the protection of King James. This was originally referred to as simply the authorized version. And where the word of a king is, there is power. King James I protected the translators so they could come out 
with the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? These brethren, okay, this, the Greek, the Hebrew, they're good for references, if you wish. They're not necessary. They were there to arrive, the seven purifications were to arrive at the final perfect purification. The scriptures in the English language. And through uh, Matthew's Bible, Tyndale's work, the Geneva Bible, okay, even the Gutenberg Bible, okay, all right, which, uh, no, Gutenberg was German, okay, beg your pardon, but in English, okay, Tyndale, Coverdale, Matthew's Bible, the Geneva Bible, were they perfect? No. No. God perfected his word. He, you know, he um, preserved his word and arrived at the perfect finished product, so to say, in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. And the fruit of the authorized version speaks for itself. But see, like I showed you, all those perversions are Bibles, right? How far do we go with this? Thank you, Brother Alexander. What is the distinction? Well, see, it says, it says Bible there. The authorized version speaks for itself. But all, all these are Bibles, right? How far do we go with this? How far do we go with this? And now, and the ultimate argument that people like to bring up. No, there was not a perfect Bible before 1611. No, there was not. What did they say? So how did people get saved before the authorized version of the scriptures came to be? And, and brethren, you know what's funny about that? You know who says that? Usually? Textual critics. People who are trained by Jesuits. Usually. And you know what they say? They say, you say that someone has to learn English to know what God said. You, and you can and say this to them. Hi, I've done this. Say this to them right back in their teeth. You say that someone has to learn Koine Greek and ancient Hebrew to perhaps know what God says. Throw it right back in their teeth like that. Do it. And they said, well, how did, how did people get saved before your precious 1611? Turn into the scriptures to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Verses 1 under verse 11. Come on. Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 11. Uh, very quickly, this is before the giving of the law. This is before the Ten Commandments. Ah, check this out. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and journeyed in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Pay attention to this. Watch this. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity and in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? 
Verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, the integrity of his heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Okay. How in the wide world of sports entertainment did Abimelech know this? How? Let's finish this chapter, uh, finish to verse 11 first, okay? Now therefore, from verse 7, Now therefore restore this man his wife, for he is a prophet. First mention of the word prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. For Ab Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said unto him, what hast, thou do, what hast thou done unto us, and what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin, that thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done? And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. The fear of God was not in this place? And look at how Abimelech reacted. How did Abimelech know this? Hmm? How did he know this? Romans chapter 1. Or excuse me. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Oh no, actually we'll read. Romans chapter 1. Verses 16 on to verse 22. Romans chapter 1. Now work with me. Fingers. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 22. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 on to verse 22. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shooed at them, shooed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but, but because but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And now go to Romans chapter uh, 2, verses... Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. Verses 12, under verse 16. 12 on to verse 16, okay? Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, 
their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, excusing or else accusing, or, oh, excuse me, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Okay? What does this mean? The laws of God are written in men's hearts. How did people get saved before there were scriptures? The law of God was written in their hearts. Okay? And this does not mean that God wants us to live apart from the scriptures. How do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? You can't trust your feelings, okay? You can't do this nutty Catholic charismatic garbage. No. First John. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, okay? First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 15. Verses 9 on to verse 15, John chapter 5. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Where is the record that God gave of his Son? I'm holding it right here, boy. The authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures. This removes verses from the New Testament. So does this. So does this. The Holman Christian Standard, the New American Standard, okay? So does the New Revised Standard. So does the ESV. So does the NIV, the NLT, the message. <coughs> Excuse me, my garbage can is over there and I can't get to it, okay? They remove the words of the Lord. They remove words from the scriptures. And they make up this spiel about, well, they weren't in the oldest and best. The oldest and best is a lie. The oldest and best that they're talking about are Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Okay? Which are in the custody of Rome. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? The record that God gave of his son. See, there was not a perfect Bible until 1611. Okay? God's hand is specifically on the authorized version of the scriptures. Look at the fruit. And what does this, 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 this is the ESV, the New Revised Standard, the Revised Standard, the Holman Christian Standard, the, uh, the New American Standard, the NLT, the NIV, the not King James, what do they compare themselves against? The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James scriptures. The true and real scriptures. All these Bible perversions compare themselves against the authorized version of the scriptures. The Geneva Bible Matthew's Bible, Tyndale's work, they were stepping stones 
to arrive at the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? And then there are twits out there who say, well, the King James went through changes. Have any of you ever actually looked into a facsimile copy of the 1611 and seen how it's spelled? Okay? Have you? I have several copies of the 1611 facim uh, facsimile copy. So does Brother Alexander. So does Vato. I, I sent them to myself. I sent them to myself, okay? You look at the 1611 in Gothic or Roman font. Gothic font means that the S's were F's, the U's were V's, the J's were I's, and so on and so forth, okay? You look at the spelling of words. They were very different. Spelling corrections, punctuation, capitalizations. That's what was made different over time within the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? That's all. The text themselves, the text itself was not changed, was not altered. Okay? Spelling, punctuation, capitalization. Periods, commas, that kind of stuff. Okay? That is what was changed. Those are the changes. Because you have to remember, there is a video out there where they show that to print the authorized version of the scriptures, they had to press, and they had to put the letters in that thing, you know, where they would put the paper on and go like that. They had to put them in backwards. Backwards, and so they had to spell everything backwards, like that. You don't think they might have made a oopsie here and there? Okay? Those are the changes. Okay? If people get technical about it, you can say, this is the 1779. Okay? And when you compare this Cambridge, okay, when I compare my Cambridge with my 1611 facsimile copy, besides the difference in spelling and capitalization, they read identical. They read identical. These don't. Those don't. You look at the fruit of the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. It speaks for itself. And again, like I've said before, you want the scriptures in your native tongue. You don't go to the Greek and Hebrew. No. They serve their purpose to arrive at this. Again, they say, oh, you say that they got to learn English. Shut your mouth, you Jesuits. Okay? Shut your mouth. You say they got to learn Koine Greek and ancient Hebrew to perhaps learn what maybe what God said. Oh, I go to the Hebrew and the Greek. Which, which tradition? Which one? You know, there are a lot of them, right? See, that's why you don't need to mess with that, because you have the completed product, if you will, the authorized version of the scriptures here. Okay? And guess what? This isn't copyrighted. So, oh, Brad, I have seen a Cambridge that has a copyright on there. Yeah? Because of the concordance, the study helps, the maps, that's what's copy copyrighted. Nice try. No. The text itself of the authorized version of the scriptures from Cambridge is not copyrighted. Okay? The text itself is not copyrighted. The maps, the study helps, that kind of stuff, if it has a co uh, copyright on it, that is why. New American Standard, copyrighted. Holman Christian Standard, copyrighted. Dewey Reams, copyrighted. The New American Bible, copyrighted. The New Jerusalem, copyrighted.
copyrighted. The NIV, copyrighted. Do you get the point? Okay? If I am not mistaken, now, do not quote me on this, and someone who may know the truth or uh, know of this, correct me in the comments. I do believe that even the Geneva Bible is copyrighted. Do not quote me on that, because that has the study helps from John Calvin in it. Okay? People were able to get saved because the law of God was written in their hearts. Okay? Now, I shut my Bible. Uh, see? See? Well, how far do we go with this? The distinction. All these fakes call themselves holy Bibles. I have the authorized version of the scriptures. How about you? How about you? You can see guys like, read your Bibles. Which one? What's the distinction? How far do you go? Huh? I, I like I said, I closed the scriptures for finished with that in First John five and nine. Okay, so we were reading from verses nine under verse fifteen, and I shut it. Excuse me. Okay, let's reread. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which He hath testified of His Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. The Scriptures. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. See, we have the church of the living God. We know something. Why do we know something? How do we know something? Because we have the record that God gave of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? God our Father did not intend for us to go blindly we have the scriptures, and we are to live according to the scriptures by faith and practice, okay? And of course, Psalm 138, Psalm 138, Psalm 138, verses 1 under verse 2. Psalm 138, verses 1 under verse 2. I will praise thee with my, I will praise thee with my, my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has staked everything on his word. If he has done that, don't you think it's perfect? All the English translations that were before the authorized version, not including the Dewey Reims, which was written by Jesuits. You're going to trust something that came from the Jesuits, huh? Yeah. Yeah. These were stepping stones. Matthew, Tyndale, um, uh, the Bishop's Bible, the Geneva's Bible, Geneva Bible. They were stepping stones to arrive at this. The Hebrew and Greek were stepping stones 
to arrive at the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. So no, brother, was there a perfect Bible before 1611? No. You have it here in the authorized version. People got saved because the law of God was written in their hearts. Okay? The scriptures were there, but the complete canon was not. And it went through the seven purification process. And God's hand was not primarily on, like the Geneva Bible and whatnot. Those were stepping stones to arrive at this. Like I said, you use this to translate into other languages. This is your text. You don't go to the Greek or the Hebrew. You come here. The King James Scriptures. Okay? No, there was not a perfect Bible before 1611. A perfect Bible. No. Here it is. Here it is. And again, that foolish argument about, well, how would people get saved if they wouldn't, you know. And then, you know, like I said, those people who ask you that, textual critics trained by Jesuit, it's like, okay, okay, do you have a perfect Bible today? Well, there's really nothing perfect. There's no perfect word of God except the originals, but there are no originals. So, so what? Which one is perfect? Why do they keep updating them? Hmm? Yeah. 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 These people who, um, these textual critics guys who use their circular arguments, <laughs> throw it right back at them. Remember Romans chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 12, okay? Romans chapter 2, write this down. Romans chapter 2, not 6 on to verse 12, uh, verses 12 on to verse 16. Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 11, okay? That shows you in different dispensations. The law of God is written in their hearts. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Okay? This is the perfect and Aaron, given by inspiration set of scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. And like I said, see it says Holy Bible, but all these say Holy Bible. That's why I refer to it, refer to this as the authorized version of the scriptures. Thank you to Brother Alexander Hartley for that. Okay? So, um, to the brother that asked me that, um, I'm sorry for showing you all this stuff, but um, that is my answer to the, your question. Okay? No, there was not a perfect Bible before 1611. Even though this is based off of the Texas Receptus and the Geneva Bible is based off the Texas Receptus, the Matthew Bible is also based off the Texas Receptus, they all don't say the same thing, even though they are based off the same text. Okay? They don't. There are differences. Here's the finished product. Here's the finished scriptures. Okay? So, that's how I will answer that. Now, that's three videos today. Okay? I'm load, uploading this one first, so it's going to seem a little backwards, but um, that's... that's what, four and a half hours? <laughs> I 
I love you, brethren, sisters. I hope this answered your question, brother. Look into it your own self. Okay? But anyway, brethren, gotta go. I love you. I got a lot of uploading to do. <laughs> and um, may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and His Word be magnified. That's all I care about. Okay? Thank you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video. In Jesus' name.